During the Ice Age, North America was filled with giants. We call them megafauna, things like woolly mammoths, mastodons, giant ground sloths, animals that were enormous, uh, everything far bigger than a buffalo. And atlatls and darts were the perfect weapon to hunt these larger animals. But eventually, those animals started to go down in numbers, and most of them became extinct. Uh, a lot of this was due to hunting by humans, but a lot of it was due to some of the changes in the climate and changes in plant growth. As many of our animals like horses and zebras here in America, they had one chambered stomachs that couldn't handle the rougher desert plants that filled the place of the prairie grasses of the old days. People were left with a world filled with smaller animals. We don't think of a buffalo as a small animal, but if a buffalo is the biggest animal in your world and you're trying to hunt a buffalo, down to the something the size of a squirrel or a rabbit, an atlatl and a dart, they're just too big. And people switch to archery, bows and arrows. Now a bow and arrow is very difficult to make. It's, it's not just a stick, there's a drying process, there's a carving process, it has to be done just right. It can't be too strong, and if it's too weak, you won't get your dinner. And arrows are very difficult to make as well. Arrows have to be straightened. An atlatl dart or a spear they don't have to be perfectly straight. The wave that they carry when they're thrown, that makes them fly straight. Arrows need to be as straight as possible. So switching to archery from atlatls was a difficult process. It required more work, but it allowed people to utilize smaller prey base like squirrels and rabbits and, and turkeys, things like that. With this primitive form of archery, where you're not using compound bows with pulleys, then the basic rule of arrows is the longer the arrow, the better the aim. The shorter the arrow, the faster the arrow. So when tribes began riding horses and could ride four feet away from a buffalo, you would use a shorter arrow. But the tribes that lived in forests, woodland areas where they were aiming between trees, hunting deer, elk far away in the forest, they utilized longer arrows. And they're two different systems that work based off of your way of life. So the landscape and the animals in that land shaped the weapons of the people who used them. In most cultures, arrows are carried in a quiver. Many Native American tribes had quivers like this, and uh, this is also what we see in Europe. I always refer to it as the Robin Hood quiver. You sling it over your shoulder, but the problem with this quiver, it's not very good for use on horseback. When this is on your back and you're having to reach while you're in a full gallop, that's kind of dangerous. And so many tribes use this quiver. It's different looking. This is called a pony quiver. So I have a bow, I have my arrows, and I have pouches for food, fire starting, and a knife to butcher whatever I hunt. But the way you wear this quiver is very strange. It looks like it's gonna fall off. This is how you wear this quiver. And it looks like it's gonna slide off. But if you're holding the reins of a horse, then from behind, it's not gonna fall off. And then you don't have wear and tear on your shoulders from hours of riding to find the buffalo. Then when you do find a herd of buffalo, or if you ride into battle, then you flip and swing it around front. Now your arrows are right here in your lap. You pull out an arrow, you shoot. You pull out an arrow, you shoot. Pull out an arrow, you shoot. Instead of having to turn around and grab an arrow each time. This is a much safer way to hunt with your arrows right there. Now in Mongolia and China, there were master uh, horse hunters as well that would hunt from horseback. They solved the problem by having a quiver attached to their belt. So different people again came up with different ways to solve the same problem.